black ain't looking, man. Please support our Patreon. Like, we need that shit so fucking bad. Look it. So last month was like a light month for content, right? In comparison to our other, to like previous months, like the previous three or four months. Mm-hmm. But. And shit, we back on video now. Yeah, we, we back here sweating and shit in this motherfucker. My we nigga, we, risk, we, we, and we shit. risking it. But this is the thing when I think about the podcast, right? That we we've honed in on this a bunch of times, but I really don't think people understand. So there's a bunch of if you look at what was that like Black History Month, and I think right after Black the Black Radical like, Month and shit like that too. Not for us, but I'm saying like so. I think about like mainstream media and like podcasts, right? Like yeah. they usually do. So. They do like the Black History for Black History Month. They have like black podcasts you should listen to. Listen to. I think about last year during the uprisings, they had like social justice podcasts that you should listen to. And out of all the podcasts, I'm sure the ones that are like the, and that's when we reach like the top 100 and shit, right? I think out of all those podcasts, out of the top five social justice podcasts, none of them have organizing ties. None of them. You can't tie them to one organization that has, and the organization that has. On the ground programs yeah. that lead to material resources and material change for the community, you cannot name you, that does not exist. No, nah, we can pull not them up a, right now. Well, matter of fact, let's just do it. I mean, you're speaking some straight <laughs> scientific let's, let's facts. Just, let's just do it. Yes, yeah, so you know, we, we, let's take it from opinion at, to, to, to yeah. science. Let's do that. So, if we're looking okay. at the organizations or or even the the top the top podcasts or the top quote unquote black podcasts. Society and culture podcast. So society and culture, that's what I should Activism look for. podcast. If you look at the top ones, the none of them is organizing. What the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? We talking about most of these shows. None of them is really outside organizing. I'm not talking about no digital organizing, you know, because digital organizing, any, any on the ground organizer going to be organizing somewhat online or, or just getting some propaganda off online, but... Solely, like that's the only place the you can solely trace thing work. you do with something is like an online book club or some digital shit. How do I look at? How do I look at the 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 um oh categories? Here we go. I find it. My bad. My bad. What, what do we call it? It's called society and culture. Where is that shit at? Oh, here we go. Society and culture. Boom. And then I think they have one that's strictly for like black shit. No, that's relationships. No, that might have just been in February. <laughs> Top news shows. What the fuck is this? Be anti racist. It's there's one that's called Be Anti Racist. This is with Ibram X. Kendi. Who is that? He's not a, he's not an organizer. He's a okay. professor. Shout out to him. Academics matter. <laughs> but again, proving the point though, right? Like you can be a professor and be an organizer. You taught at Cal and was organizing. So I mean, like it's just I know niggas don't like we gotta just I'm just using this to prove a point and to make my case for when I start begging in a couple minutes. Okay. So <laughs> when you bring out the <laughs> the tip jar, the Patreon yeah, I'm jar. Yeah, I'm finna bring out that uh, Patreon shit. jar. Well my nigga Peasy say, I'm not afraid to hustle. I'm not embarrassed to hustle, nigga. Um They don't even have society and culture. Oh, society and culture is here, but I guess this is the point that I'm trying to prove is that last summer this shit was all black shit. Like it was just hell of black podcasts on here, and I'm no pun intended. But there you go. You feel me? It's, it's uh... they're not even on here anymore. But I think we can probably like link to an article. I wish I had the article when we were in top podcasts. Maybe if I search. And part of me is like, oh, we making people wait too long to get to the content. But honestly, ain't this how all podcasts start wasting y'all fucking time? <laughs> I mean, all those other YouTube shows is all I'm wasting y'all time with, with bullshit. Okay, let me see. Hella black podcast, top podcast. That's what I'm gonna put. <laughs> what was that one podcast that they had a can- canteen full of Kool Aid? <laughs> drinking Kool Aid. That was the first fifteen minutes of the podcast. I mean, I think we we already know the fact of the matter is that. An issue, especially an issue in the so-called West, right? America is, is you see people talking about these issues. Talk, 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 tweet, 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 but not organized to fix the issue. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the key thing. Is is, is is especially in this celebrity culture that has been developed. There's a lot of celebrity culture shit on the left, the so-called left. Where people want to be seen as the talking heads, but not the movement, not actually doing the work of the movement, the, the day-to-day grind, the shit that ain't fun, you know what I'm saying? 
that no. builds towards black liberation and people want to have a brand, build their brand, build their career, build their nonprofit head status, right? And do their book tours and shit, you know what I'm saying? But not necessarily be, not be on the ground organizing, doing the day-to-day work that is important for liberation. And we have to identify that purely as, as neoliberalism, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Purely as capitalism, purely as, you feel me, trying to be that token Negro, wanting to sit at the table. You know what I'm saying? But it's very clear what the new African independence movement calls for. Yeah. You feel me? And the the decolonization programs that we need to build. You know what I'm saying? For us to all be free. For us to all (laughs) live life as free people, as as human beings. You know what I'm saying? The shit that leads to material change, which brings us back. I want to elaborate on your point, but like we talking about material change, which brings us back as to why niggas haven't been doing the podcast. Like we're recording this the day before uh, tomorrow, we're going to be leading a workshop for our community learning programs. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like now that um, COVID restrictions have been lifted and shit in California, like whereas, you know, the niggas who was leading marches and shit last year is, you know, back to traveling and partying and shit. We like, oh, we could open the shit back up. Oh, boom. Community learning. Period. Like the parties and shit is cool, but like, you feel me? We Now we're going to use our shit to be using this opportunity to, to push the politic even further. And I say like, Again, the main point before I go on a fucking bash and rant or get on a soapbox or whatever, the reasons why, if you a Patreon, if you're a patron of ours, I'm again go ahead and tell another patron, uh, go go tell a friend to be a patron of our shit and support our work. Um, and I I know that some people come to Patreon for for content. Y'all come for the actual episodes. Y'all come for the videos. But like anytime we not doing this, it's because we doing something else that's in alignment with the shit that we on here talking about. Uh, or we have some organization shit come up like last week. Yeah, <laughs> there's some organization things that came up where we had to deal with, and then shoot, we supposed to record, and we drained. You feel me? Yeah. And shoot, then it's having to travel to go get this health clinic together. You know what I'm well, saying? I'm saying since we like, in the midst shoot, of not recording, then I get food poisoning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, real life should be happening. You know what I'm saying? But we still doing this work, and if don't judge the work by how many podcast episodes we drop in, <laughs> yeah. judge the work by people's programs. By the decolonization programs, by the food we feeding, by the health care we about to to give folks, you feel me? The grocery program, the writing, you know in, what I'm saying? And in the in the midst of for for the podcast that we so let's say we did well one pack if we used to doing like four or three or three or four podcasts a month that we did one last month. I think we we did two. We did two last month. We have done we have purchased and we have we have our, our mobile health clinic now. We have launched, relaunched our community learning. We have um, distributed uh, uh, over a thousand meals. We have distributed groceries over, you know, a hundred bags of groceries to families in Oakland. That's what is happening when niggas not doing the podcast. Shout out people's programs. And again, like if y'all gonna pour y'all time and effort, like what do y'all want to support? Do y'all want to just t- support the talking heads, or y'all want to support the niggas that talk and back it up? You feel me? So like, start looking for that. I don't, I don't gonna say we the only podcasters out there that's doing. It. I ain't gonna say we the only people with an online presence who on the ground is is more folks than us. And them the people that y'all should be supporting the niggas who is doing both. You feel me? Because doing both is possible. And people be having whatever little excuse. If you are physically able to get outside, it's just you just lack commitment. That's all it is. And we got to call a spade a spade. Ooh, somebody said that was racist. We have to. Look. Someone said that's racist. Right. <laughs> somebody said me. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I thought it was a card game, but uh. And so yeah, I say all that to say. <laughs> Support our Patreon, my nigga, straight up. Because even when we ain't making podcasts, we live in the shit that we talking about. You feel me? So, nigga, support organizers. Support us. And, yeah, bro, to the point of, like, I think, like, the one of the key, like, characteristics of neoliberalism is fucking presenting things as progress through, like, diversity, through representation, inclusion, through representation right? But really, what has, nothing is really changing, changing on a, quantitative level on a qualitative level from a systemic level things aren't really changing from a from you know a material saying? level right? yeah a, from so a, we look at tomorrow you know june uh juneteenth is, is friday right or saturday saturday is juneteenth and you know there's, there's a push to make juneteenth a federal holiday but what has changed material materially for black people it's always these symbolic always these tokens but no material change for africans and why are you gonna ask your slave master you gonna ask your slave master for a holiday while slavery still exists through the Thirteenth Amendment, <laughs> while slavery still exists through the wages you was being paid, 
while the capitalist is making millions and billions and trillions of dollars. We already got a month. What the fuck is the other holiday going to do? Besides, they all going to do is find a way to monetize it. Ford's Juneteenth sale. The same Ford that was Brother. discriminating against uh, fucking Africans in Detroit, not hiring niggas. <laughs> like, what? But again, capitalism will always capitalize off of movements. And that's what we've seen. Ford's Fundamentally. Ford's Juneteenth sale when Africans came in to afford a car. <laughs> look at it materially, right? Look at look at this past summer. Rebellions, right? Protests, everything going on. And now look at the comparison this summer. It should show you exactly where we are. What representation gets you? Where Kamala Harris presidency, where she says she's gonna stop deportations, and then is now telling you know, don't come people here. in Guatem- Guatemala don't come here. <laughs> But saying, oh, this is a land for all, whatever, <laughs> whatever the fuck that means. You know what I'm saying? But that's exactly what this representation, we at the height of this representation shit. Does representation equal freedom? Nope. <laughs> and ce- celebrity culture is like, I think as it, as it pertains to America, the United States of America is like the fucking epitome of, um, of representation of inclusion. Cause you you get it usually comes from what? Cause you get politicians, the, yeah. athletes, entertainers, like all the things that niggas want to aspire to be because they have class, they have power, fame, they have in the facade of power. Cause most of these niggas can't really move a needle because if we talking about power in a capitalist society, that means the means owning the means of production, which most NBA players don't own the means to shit. I mean, NBA, <laughs> NBA players, even though Most they feel me, they're making money, don't, don't own the means. They still being shit. exploited. You know what I'm saying? So nah, I'll say some politicians. I don't know some, some of them, some, some. But yeah. like niggas run around want to be the mayor of Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so I think um, that that's why it's like they're that's why they're prompted on there because these are the niggas who can who can distract us the best with the idea of change and hope. You get, you know, uh. LeBron James, you get a Jay Z, you get these niggas who at, at one point did come from, you know, like poverty and being impoverished Africans, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> who, who had to do whatever, who, whatever, defy whatever odds to get to where they are, right? And so if you have like, which is going to be the majority of Americans in terms of where they, the majority of, of, of new Africans. Right, black folks in America. That's gonna be the the majority of our fucking upbringing. It's right. poverty and, and and escaping the pitfalls of capitalism. Um, and so when you get someone like that who has, you just assume like you just see yourself in them to some degree, right? Like most of us already see ourselves in. I mean, they use it as the bootstrap mentality. You yeah, know what most of us already see ourselves in, in the rich anyway, right? That's why yeah. niggas be like retweeting shit like, "Oh, if you laughing at a millionaire and you broke, you the problem." Is because for some reason we have this. Warping of our mind that has us aligning with this false class solidarity. We, we be having class solidarity with people who, who we're not even in the who same laugh, class. Who, yeah, who talk about who, who told you, you that the nigga who's retweeting this that is poor that like you need to shut up too. <laughs> like you're you're a part of this. Like nigga, the moment you laugh at me, you are gonna be the fool. <laughs> and so, yeah, the, the point being like, for some knowing that we already align that we have this false sense of class solidarity with the rich and then we have like someone who was once poor now be rich now we have like this double sided thing of seeing ourselves in them and we just trust these niggas I don't know why I don't know I just I don't know why but for some reason people just tend to trust these niggas based off their upbringing knowing that no matter what their current actions they just don't let their current actions define them and they don't let their act the reality they're not judging shit by the reality that's presented to them and so I mean, we got to understand these people as a part of the propaganda machine, as a inherent part of this imperialist project is using, quote unquote, colonial subjects, new Africans, using Africans, using black people to be a part of the propaganda machine, to do the job of the machine, to do the job of the state. You know what I'm saying? And do I think LeBron consciously thinks he's doing the job of the state? He probably don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he's being used in a way. As a as a representation token, I mean, wh- as why a, would he if you know he actually saying? was one of the niggas who yeah. you feel me came from poverty and came up and was able to start his schools and shit? He like, well, shit, like if I did it, anybody can do it. That's literally yeah. what most of these niggas be preaching. If I did it, you could do it. If I did it, you could do it. And it's like, nigga, you are 
anomaly. Like one in a billion an- anomaly. And look then, at all the niggas who look at all the niggas. The other you ain't the only kid from Akron, nigga. And Kwame Ture <laughs> said it himself. He said, you know, the the state will maneuver and will will pick a token Negro <laughs> to serve the interests of the so state. I think your reality is the is the norm. And then it gives a, an example to everyone else. Oh, you can be like an Oprah. Oh, you can be like a Jay Z. Oh, you can be like a Nas. You can be like this person. You know what I'm saying? You could be a P Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Like they give you those examples to not blame your ass for being poor, and that's an inherent part of celebrity culture. And that's that's what it, that's what it's used for. But you know, um, like Kwame and Krum would be saying the same thing. Like back in 1968, the state will always adopt its changes. You feel me? Will make some changes in order to keep the state tr- strong. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it will use integration, <laughs> and it will use representation to give you the false false sense of being included in the society. But the masses of your people is landless, ain't own shit. You feel me? Colonized subject. Living on colonized land. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this is how the state has maneuvered and is now giving us representation. And you know what's <laughs> wild is I think sometimes when, when people, when we when you talk about celebrity culture, since so much of it is challenging to people's identity because celebrities do start to identify as, as celebrities whether consciously or subconsciously, like that becomes a part of who they are. Like the status shit is is ingrained into their head, and they start to take it as an attack against them. When you start to attack their entire, you know, personhood, their identity, right? But it's like, all right, my because you want to, you almost want to defend them off identity. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like that's how a lot they, of times, they trying to they trying to defend yeah. themselves. Like, oh, you attacking they, you attacking yeah. my money, you attacking my persona, you know, you attacking me. And it's like, now nah, we attacking the system that created you, my nigga. Yeah. And also, it's like, okay, if you able to st- take a step back out of your ego, I seen you and Left talking about ego the other day. Because what I think people sometimes get frustrated was like, oh, so you saying there's no place for me then? Like, that I have no meaning as a celebrity? It's like, no, you have a, a place. It's not to be a pawn for the state, nigga. And it's also to stop pushing uninformed and underdeveloped ideas. Niggas start like a lot of a lot of these celebs just be regurgitating information. Can't give you a primary nor secondary source. They just be regurgitating with people around them who are usually other pawns of the state. PR, nigga. As a nigga who works in entertainment, there you have PR. I work as a PR person. We're going to say that this this way. This is literally what I do for a living. I'm telling y'all right here. Like this is what happened. You have a PR person who is likely some figurehead for some big media company and who owns the who owns the media <laughs> the same niggas who own the means of production right and so they're gonna tell you what to say and how to say things so that's not your role as a celebrity is being is regurgitating and a shit lot of being, celebrity shit is just controlled opposition they're gonna tell you which brings <laughs> us to niggas like mark ruffalo don't say anything that is going to fuck up the money which is going don't and if that's, that's not gonna fuck up your money and in turn going fucking raise consciousness that's just what it's gonna say don't say nothing that's gonna fucking go that's gonna be anti the state and we say the state the government the police the capitalists don't say anything that's anti that you feel me what stan lee was calling that nigga from the grave you feel me like <laughs> stan lee up. was calling that nigga from the grave like hey bro if you want this next marvel check so again you right, better stop point, saying you the better point, stop the, saying it, talking this uh pro uh pro palestine shit yeah. you better be coming on this real quick and denounce Denounce Palestine and say, oh, yeah, Israel isn't genocidal. Yeah, and so, like, the point being, right, like, trying to... <laughs> control the opposition again. Yeah, like, you don't want to be that. You don't want to be a pawn for niggas. Like, Mark Ruffalo being a, a prime example. Like, the nigga has said some shit about, you feel me, the actions of Israel against the Palestinians as genocidal. And then the next day, he recanted on his shit. And his words verbatim was, I have reflected and wanted to apologize for posts during the recent Israel-Hamas fighting that suggested Israel is committing gen- genocide. It's not accurate. It's inflammatory, disrespectful, and it's being used to justify anti-Semitism here and abroad. My nigga, no. What you described was g- describing Israel's actions against Palestine as genocidal was a correct analysis, my nigga. A scientific fact based on history. In present day actions. In present day actions. Present day actions. What you go, you can go on the internet and see these Zionist flag marches, where these Zionists is chanting death to Arabs. You can look at police <laughs> telling activists. You can look at Israel police telling Palestinian activists, "I should shoot you in your fucking head." You can look at. What are we talk, to talking about? Uh, destroying mosques and shit, yeah. and saying Palestine should not exist. That 
<laughs> the that occupying is terrorism, of land. that is genocide. <laughs> the occupy, you know what I'm saying? So it's like that was a fair analysis. But what happened was Marvel or whoever, his agent, PR, was like, no, we don't say this. For one, because who owns the means of production? Who owns the media company? Some fucking Zionist, <laughs> some fucking imperialist, some fascist owns the company. Some settler. Owns the company. And you were have you, what you are saying is anti the state because the state is in co is who is pro Israel. You can't say that, my nigga. So you and if we up understand how settler colonialism works, <laughs> Israel as a as a puppet nation for the United States, as a colony of the United States. So let's bring. So again, bringing it back for y'all. Quote unquote, that protecting not, interests. Bringing it back for y'all. That is not the role of celebrity. The role, like if if you want to be actually be pro the people, pro liberation, pro freedom, like all these buzzwords that celebrities love to throw out. Um, equity, equality, all the shit that you saw on the back of these niggas' jerseys last year. Black Lives Matter. If you do want to be someone that shows that black lives do matter, that you are for um, equality. And I think at a base level, equality is fucking civil rights and it's not fucking blowing up mosques and shit, right? And so if you want to be a nigga who does stand for that, you cannot be a pawn of the capitalist. You can't be a pawn. That's not the role of a celebrity activist that is trying to do the right thing. And that will be prevented. Shall you start to develop a real analysis? Like Ruffalo had one. He had one. He just has no spine. It's such a punk. Soft. I'm sh- like, how much money do you actually need, Mark Ruffalo? You've been in 17 Mar- Marvel movies. Do you actually need the next one? That's what I'm saying. These people don't have no courage, bro. Do you actually need they don't the next give, one? They don't want to give up anything All for right, the so movement. We- only when it's popular. What does celebrity activism look like then? So we showing we showing niggas what Celebr- it's not. I mean, I think celebrity organize. Um, they need to pull up and fuck with the people. You know what I'm saying? They need to actually consistently because even con- one nigga tried to do it right one time, and now he you know working with Ben and Jerry's and all type of weird shit, and has no again no ties to community organizing at this. Point. Yeah, I mean, if you ain't if you ain't tapped in with real on the ground organizations that is doing work to materially uplift and help the people and serve the people that are building decolonization programs. That, that's the way to do it. If you look at uh, uh, Paul Robeson, I think he's a perfect example, and I think celebrities should study study him and, and what he's done in terms of, you know, charging genocide, you know what I'm saying, um, to the United Nations, right? Like, who those was, are... Who was, who was one uh, old girl, the white lady who used to fuck with the Panthers? You know who I'm talking about. Was it Dolly... Not Dolly Parton? Oh, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, what is the white lady name? I just bro, thought about a white shit. lady. I don't know. Uh, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> bro, what is wrong with you, nigga? The fuck? White lady. Fuck, 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 fuck. Why can I remember this woman's name? Why can I not remember this woman's name? This is insane. But she was like, you feel me? He was like helping fundraise for niggas, speaking at Free Huey campaigns and all type of shit. Renona Ryder? No, that's not her. That's for the Stranger Things. <laughs> you over here laughing at me doing the same thing. I was just thing. watching Stranger Things last night. Uh, that's why they stuck in my head. Speaking I know who you're talking about. But, um, Fuck! It's a name like that. I'm about to Google white lady that supports Black Panthers. <laughs> that's what I just did. <laughs> uh, watch when this lady She was just in the news, too, over something, too. Some with the vaccine or something. I am a white woman who dated a Black Panther. I That's the shit that Rachel came. Dole was on. You see this? <laughs> oh my god! Uh, what is this lady's name, dude? We're not about to spend too much time thinking about this woman, but but I think celebrities. That's what it like, though. You was naming it. You said Paul Robeson and shit. I'm sorry. Yeah. So pulling up and supporting the movement. You know what I mean? From a, a real in the field stance. Well, I mean in the field, people doing work for the people. And the ghettos across America, you know what I'm saying? Like, really being outside. You know, I, I think we see things like a, a killer mic. <laughs> Not that, but actually being outside, being on the ground, and being with the people. You know, giving your money where you can, you know what I'm saying? But being being really outside. Like, I think, like, Ekpe, he's came and pulled up to programs. <laughs> Help support us get microphones and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it can be done. It's just the question is, are you willing to put your ego aside? You and, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that's sometimes like you come in like, okay, you a celebrity. And it's like, nah, like you you a person here, just like we all Africans. <laughs> we all working for this common goal. So how do we work to this common goal? You I think know what one, I'm of the, one of the biggest things that I want to see, because you'll, like, you'll, you'll get, you know, being in music, I'll have niggas that come up to me and be like, 
man, why you be saying shit about Obama and, you know, like, or whatever my, my like, more radical stances are, right? Like, niggas just be having a bunch of, like, critiques that are rooted in how I make them feel, not rooted in, like, when, whenever we want to have an actual discourse, they can't point to any, like, readings they've done. They can only point to, like, you can just tell they're just re- reciting It's like, bro, why, why are you talking about Obama like that, man? Come on, bro. Yeah, it's, it's shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Or just, like, people's, crit- like, they don't really have a, an analysis of the United States of America. They don't really have a critique. They just have the indoctrination of it. It's just like... That's but, that, what, but that's how strong this propaganda and this celebrity culture really is. You feel me? Even on the left. I've had niggas try to tell me about capitalism. Like, do you know how this shit works? Like, yeah. like that's not how it works. Like, you, like it, it's an exploitive system by demand. Prices go up. Wages wages go up. The pricing go up. Like, that's just how this shit works. So it's like... Look at inflation about, over the years. You, you keep talking about we just we talk about our minimum <laughs> wage and shit. Like, my nigga, that's not how economics works. And so, like... I think, and so the point being, people just have to get out of their feelings and ego. And I just, for me, what I want niggas to do is literally read more and develop an analysis. Like, read. Please read more. I'm about to close this window. This fucking garbage truck coming by. But. Fucking 12 o'clock in the afternoon. The life of a podcaster. But. It's everything, in my opinion, is possible. It just it takes a lot of ego work. It takes realizing that you've been lied to your whole life, you know what I'm saying, and admitting that you you might have partaken in your own lie, you know what I mean? Because I think that's what it is for a lot of people. It's like, how could this person that I, I revered my whole life, you know, or how can this, like, you know, corny idols become your rivals type shit? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what are you saying about Jay-Z? Like, man, you despise him, but you know the lyrics to his songs. <laughs> but you ain't letting that get in the in the way of, you feel me? A material analysis of what he has done in terms of investing in ankle monitors, but you, in terms of what he's done and working with snitches. I mean, you it, feel it, me? It, in, in the DEA a, and shit. On, on a more material level, it's just like, okay, I've seen what I've been able to do with my quote unquote platform. I've seen what our organization has been able to do with money. And I to know that someone has a hundred thousand times more resources than we have and preaches black power and black liberation and isn't doing what we're doing is my patience is going to be short when pro athletes talk about black power and you know freedom and, and unity and liberation and all this shit then you realize like they don't do anything but these you know few events every year they're not doing no reading they're not talking about none of this shit post 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 game they're not using every moment they have to speak that shit into truth it's going to be hard to respect you it's going to be hard because I've been able to elevate in capitalism. I have success in this shit and I'm still keeping And you ain't one. Still <laughs> you on still be like, nah, bro, this shit ain't bro, it. this is not a joke, my nigga. This is a <laughs> gold record, bro. <laughs> and I'm finna go organize after this shit. This, I can tell you, I probably came back from LA this weekend to organize. The day we shot this video type shit. You feel me? Like, this is... I'm Probably not, at the program that next. Day. <laughs> like, bro, niggas not asking nobody to do nothing that they haven't done. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And it's just like literally trying to show niggas. Niggas was work. You, we just say, all right, if you teaching, you feel me, you should be connected to some. Oh, we had the critique of bro who was in top society and culture podcast. Uh, you was like he a professor, and I'm like, you feel me? Like, yeah, you taught at Cal for four years, a real college course, real credits. This is not something that's just make up <laughs> zero units. Like, it's a real course. Yeah. You feel me? And you was organizing. Period. Like, you can... I don't... It's just about what sacrifices you want to make. And even, let's say, if you don't have the time to you know what I'm saying? on the ground. Because realistically, right? So, I could have been teaching. I could have had a book out by now. You know what I'm saying? If I wasn't organizing. And also, right? You feel me? So, it's yeah. like, it's the sacrifices that a lot of academics are like... Oh, to push their career far- farther, they want to publish, 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 which means they writing, 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 and they ain't organizing, organizing, organizing. You know what I'm saying? They ain't outside. They ain't, you know, they ain't doing the work to necessarily support a movement. You got to figure out how to you make a me? sacrifice somewhere, and that's and that's the thing about. But shout out to the professors, a few that do. <laughs> and, and yeah, the thing is, like, you are gonna have to make a sacrifice somewhere, and that's just what comes. There's not no one who's fighting that's not making a sacrifice in, in some degree. But, but that's what the that's new what, African that's, independence that's, movement that's, calls for. And that's also right. the biggest like pitfall of celebrity culture is that you get to do both. You get to just say shit that aligns that like that'll resonate 
with the 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 uh, people you, you you can use the theories of yeah, liberation you, get, you like, can talk talk, talk the talk of black power and then you get to get the bad and then you, know you get the speaking engagement for it and then you're seen as this Excuse you feel me you're seen as this person who is now the the holder of all this quote unquote radical knowledge but in practice you ain't on the ground yeah. doing that work you know what i'm saying and I've seen elders do this shit. I've seen elders continue to do this work. But then I also, <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Throughout their whole life. So, something I want to touch on and like get your opinion on is all right. So, knowing that there are roles for everyone, right? Like, sometimes if we trying to get the the person with the biggest platform, like let's say like LeBron might not be actually be able to pull up to the hood and, and organize, but like bro, there is so much money you could put into grassroots shit that actually aligns. Like the charter school shit is cool, but like, bro, come on. If we talk about terms of like what's what's happening in them schools, I'm pretty sure niggas is being turned into fucking drones and respectability Negroes. You feel me? So and that's just that's a whole other story. But I'm saying like knowing the fact that okay, everybody actually, especially if you in terms of you trying to like take the movement internationally, right? Like if LeBron wants to start going to Korea, North Korea, and to fucking Cuba and all, like gonna be traveling so much, he might not be able to be actually be on the ground. But that's what it would look like for a nigga who really, really can't be here. Like you gonna use your power and celebrity to take the movement even further. That's what that shit will look like. And you take it at the direction of organization. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's the key part, organization. And I think that's that. Ideology, like, you gotta, you have to have an ideology that's to move your work. And it got to be your North Star. It got to be your compass. If you don't have that ideology, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've seen people say, oh, we just shift with the ideologies. No. Your ideology has to be very clear and has to help you move forward. And, of course, it should be always growing and transforming and, and adapting with the time period and the times you was at. But your ide- if you don't have ideology, you're walking around in circles. You feel me? And that's 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 a key thing right now in this in this uh, time period we're at is we don't have strong organizations. If we have strong organizations with people power – strong organizations that have decolonization programs and is really doing the work, then people are going to be able to follow directions from organizations. You know what I'm saying? And be able to build with organizations. And that's what, yeah, what, yeah. what we see right now is we don't see, we see uh, the height of neoliberalism, the height of the nonprofit industrial complex where people think organizing and organizing is being co-opted by our own people where now, you know, if you're a digital organizer, you you run an online organization. What is an online organization? I that 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 ain't that ain't organizing. You know what I'm saying? Or well, you my, what, event planner? What left? That's stop, what I was about stop, to say. Left said that, bro. <laughs> like you an you an event planner, bro. You ain't no organizer. You feel me? You just planning panels. Like that's not organizing. I'm sorry. That is part of it. If you in, in an organization, you need to or, organize community or learning. Just, you like what we doing? Fucking grocery giveaways every three months. Or you or you no follow up and no. No politic behind your guys. It's just charity. It's just, or are you yeah, partnering sure. partnering with the police association to do an event? That ain't organizing. That ain't organizing. That is counter revolutionary activity. You know what I'm saying? So I think we just got to be very clear about what what has to be done, and the answers are there. It's just are we willing to look at them? And are we willing to do that work? You know, because if we're using history as a guiding mechanism, it shows us exactly what can and won't work. What won't work. If we look at revolutions and independence movements, what has happened in every organization in every movement has been organization. And that's what that's what has to be built is we need strong organizations and we need leaders to be involved in these organizations. We need strong leaders involved in these organizations that is pushing the politic forward. Fundamentally, that's how we can counteract these opportunists. When organizations become strong, when the people become strong, when these mass organizations become strong. People gonna be like, oh, that's an online shit. All they doing is this. Is, oh, they, they just reading on a book club online every month. They ain't outside feeding people. They ain't, you know what I'm saying? And then that's how we draw those lines of demarcation. It's like, nah, this this is actually some counter revolutionary shit. And there's always gonna be this controlled opposition. The state will always give controlled opposition, and that's what a lot of these nonprofits are. It's controlled opposition by the state to give the illusion of change, to give the illusion of, of progress happening. But realistically, it's the government giving the money back to these organizations. You know what I'm saying? So even talking about this online shit, I think is, is something important to be speaking on, you know, especially in this Twitter sphere and Instagram. And, you know, everybody is, is getting their quote unquote activism off through their Instagram infographic and their Twitter infographic. It's like if we look at look at it from a scientific approach. And this all goes back to celebrity culture because you think, oh, if you have a big platform online, you're a celebrity. If you have a blue check, you're a celebrity. You know what I'm saying? 
two out of ten Americans is on Twitter. It's twenty <laughs> percent. So two out of ten is on Twitter, and then most of those people is middle class and quote unquote educated, meaning they went to college. So who is you really talking to online? You in an echo chamber. You talking to people well, mostly with the same class status. A bunch of motherfuckers talking and doing nothing. Talking, doing nothing, validating your own ego through retweets and likes and that dopamine in your brain thinking you're doing something. And I'm here to tell you it's part of it. You need to get your propaganda off, but the work is outside. The thing about <laughs> propaganda is propaganda is usually associated with an ideology, connected to an ideology, an organization, and a plan. <laughs> so we got to stop calling these Man, fucking come on. These journal tweets. entries. <laughs> These journal or these, these, these threads, and you these feel me? Pinterest post propaganda. That shit is not propaganda. That is not. Niggas really think they're doing. You're not doing propaganda. You are regurgitating. At best, you regurgitating some theory, nigga. And at best, you just sending out these signals to bring the rest of your people. To I mean, half these signals is to saying support these nonprofits. Mm-hmm. You feel me? These counter revolutionary organizations or support this online thing. It's like nah. It's like you really got to get outside and be with the people. You know what I'm saying? You got to get outside and talk with the people. You got to get outside and host learning. You know what I'm saying? Get outside and feed people with a, a correct political bro. ideology. Not just saying you're feeding people to feel good. Consistently. You know? Motherfuckers talking about we building community with an event that happens once in every now and again. You know what building community looks like? It looks like the community learning program. It looks like the garden program. It looks like the the free breakfast program. It looks like the grocery program. That's what that shit looked like. The, health, like, the healthcare program. It looks healthcare. like it looks consistently like consistent. doing things that brings y'all together and that meets the needs of the people. That's building community. Building community is not hosting an event once and then waiting until and you don't have you don't have anything political to say until the next opportunity comes yeah. for you to host an event. And the fact of the matter is, this ain't easy. It ain't easy work. That's why it's easier to get on Twitter. It's easier to be a celebrity activist than a than a, a real movement contributor, right? Because like even when we talk about activists versus organizers, activists usually can just go around doing their own thing. They don't have yeah, no you an to individual hold them to hold them. They're, they're not accountable to a politic or a, a body of folks to really rein them in. A lot and, of and that, that's, should be roles. Yeah, and that's how people like if you're listening, you should be able to identify people, right? Use this as a tool to identify what people is on, right? So if you see a person on Twitter talking all this talk. Figure out where's their political home. What organization are they a part of? What is that organization actually doing? You know what I'm saying? Everyone says join an organization. Well, your organization is just an online organization. <laughs> Color of change type shit. You know what I'm saying? If you're really outside, though, you you going to know the political home. My political home, people's programs. That ain't no secret. <laughs> Hell black. Political education. That ain't no secret. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but that that's but we we got to counteract it. <laughs> we got to counteract these celebrities being used, whether knowingly, some knowingly, by the state to be controlled opposition and to give people a guise. Because all of it, most of these celebrities, what happens every every election? They funneling people to the booth, but they funneling people to to the streets to support the people, to support the decolonization programs. Or to even support mutual aid programs. Josh had a tweet. Um, let me change this. I'm not sure. Queer socialism on Twitter. Um, he says celebrity activists aren't just useless because they are politically underdeveloped, if not outright reactionary, but because they are usually accountable to far too many forces of capital and therefore incapable of being truly accountable to the people they claim to advocate for. Again, talk about being accountable to some people, right? Um, how can a celebrity be use be of use to social movements when they are far too easily disciplined by the rule of capital, having to appease their millions of adoring fans, labels, shareholders, corporations, and the movement itself? That's far too many conflicting interests here. Literally bring your home the points that we just talked about. He's going to be like, how can a nigga like Ruffalo be, how can he meet the needs of the people who are like, yo, there's a fucking genocide going on in Palestine and be and be accountable to Marvel. To Marvel, <laughs> which is owned by again probably someone who has owns owns the means of production around the world. How can you? It's, it's conflicting, and that's where it's like you tied to global capitalists. You tied to the <laughs> international capitalist system. And this is why, like, I'm and not you, saying like I'm I'm not trying to craft no purity politic idealist. 
I don't think situations it's where it's like, all right, like how was the nigga supposed to? It's like literally, like my nigga. At some point, you're going to have to stop putting the money first. That's the number one thing. At some point, you have to say, I'm not going to put the money first. And I think after you've made millions of dollars in an industry, you've made millions. You talk about independent production, like nigga, in, Hella Black is an independent podcast. Like you don't, and it started as one, and can remain as one. A nigga like Ruffalo, who has made millions of dollars through working with the biggest production companies in the world, can do independent films if he wants to. You could go start an independent film company. Period. Today. Period. Fund it with his own money. And the, the way how shit is so liberal these days, nigga, like, that was bare minimum to call that shit a genocide. Like, damn, nigga. At the, you could have went and got somewhere else, nigga. And it would have been a, like, you, you didn't even need that shit. <laughs> but I'm posting But you you for the people I ain't for the people And that's people, my thing man. Like niggas is a, like Okay well he'll lose His sponsorships Who nigga. cares Sometimes you gotta You have to make a sacrifice At some point you have to Make the choice at some, You have you to know, either say You thing, win it You're not actually To be out here on the ground With us my nigga We at least ask you To be willing to lose A few of them sponsorships Because shit is so liberal Right now Like nigga at, To say free Palestine Don't even got the fucking Weight that it had 15 years ago Or even a few years ago I'm like bro shit is so liberal like these niggas not even doing the bare minimum and that's why I'm like it's hard to take niggas serious and that's why people have to stop investing so much energy into these folks who are tied to capital and capitalists fucking if you tied to capital when you tied to the system you was tied to the state that is oppressing our people every day Kwame Ture said the best Kwame Ture said the best people love capitalism more than they love people and that's what niggas show you when they're afraid to do when they're af- just saying the hard thing where shit is going to pass by anyway saying the hard thing when you up millions of dollars he going to get another job you up, even if you stay you don't, don't got to work again and you don't got to work again you don't have to work again niggas not willing to make sacrifices well, that's bro. the thing these, these millionaires but we the ones that got to make them the people supposed to make them not the nigga with all the money and the resources the people the poor <laughs> these millionaires don't want to make the sacrifices these millionaires with houses on houses on houses Keeping hella money in their pocket and they're afraid to make a sacrifice. One of the last things I wanted to touch on was like another place where I think quote unquote celebrity activists could like make some changes and do a better job of is this thing of like, okay, like starting to frame themselves as advocates versus leaders and representers, right? Because it's gonna be hard to represent something you're so far detached from. Like you you live in the hills. You have access to the to the luxury to all the luxuries that capitalism can afford, and to say that you are a representation of the poor is is false. You know what I'm saying? And so I think if we can give it like a practical a practical standpoint, is like, okay. If you're a celebrity activist, right, like NBA player, NFL rapper, singer, whatever the fuck, like if you on Twitter, you should just be retweeting shit, and you and you should just be retweeting it and 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 post and boosting shit, right, and then. I think anytime you want to put your own like words into something, it should be brief if it's not developed. You feel me? But go ahead and support this. Free all the little buzzwords shit y'all do. Do that. And really making sure y'all are boosting on the ground shit. Like period, point blank. I think that's somewhere motherfuckers can do a better job of. And I also think that like when these events are being planned, like nigga, you know, Panthers is holding rallies and speeches and community learning and political aid, all that shit all the time, right? If you doing that, there's no reason why I want to hear Fucking Killer Mike, Lena Waithe, and LeBron James talk about uh, police brutality. There's no reason why I want to hear them four talk about it. Now, if them four want to put their money together and host a six-month summit where they bring in motherfuckers who have been on the ground, like, who is it, Bop? Like, who would we talk to? Is it? Do we talk to... Derica or Daniel? Yeah, Black Organizing Project. Yeah, like niggas who are like in, in the like places throughout the throughout the ghettos of America, and they are them them people I just named are holding space for the ground roots grassroots niggas to come through, not the niggas with the big ass platforms who ain't doing shit but existing online. The niggas who are literally on the ground every day pulling up to them schools protesting. That's working the nine to fives. That's doing that, and you holding the space for them to get the ears of the masses. That's how you can start supporting them events. I don't want to hear. Um, the biggest celebrities in Oakland talk about fucking police brutality. I don't want to hear them talk about gentrification in Oakland. Y'all not out here doing it. You feel me? I don't, I don't want to hear them niggas do that. I don't. Especially knowing that if y'all not finna come but reiterate shit that y'all have heard Libby Schaff and the city council say, I don't want to hear that. Like the only reason you should be speaking on shit 
is if you're doing it as a result of an organization pushing you to say something. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you actually is using your platform to uplift a message that an organization is trying to push. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's taking direction rather than pushing some shit that might actually be on some state shit. That means going against everything that the, that, that people have con- conditioned you to be over the last five years. Because as niggas who have friends and family that are celebrities, they have been conditioned to believe that because of their fi- because of their economic status and their celebrity status, that they are therefore most knowing, um, most moral, and that's not the facts. You are just rich. You have just been propped up as a as an image. That's all that that's that's all it has. And if we do the scientific fact, you are not most knowing because you cannot s- cite more primary sources than me. You cannot give a f- more in depth analysis than I can of the systems that we are claiming to want to destroy. So take it. That's just that's something that like are we even in our organ even in organizing you see people have a problem taking leadership right. These are people who have no experience and don't even have nearly as much, you know, ego. Ego, the pumping up of the ego, seeing their faces everywhere. They don't even come back in that. Now imagine a nigga who's been told his whole life, you who's been told the last four years, you the best, you the greatest. And when people come around and they're afraid to speak and all that shit. And you fifty unless million. You, and you fifty million up. <laughs> unless you got people around you where I, 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 on average, the niggas who I know with hella money and hella success, they don't have niggas around them that are. Even myself, there are times where like, I have family members who I'm like, I ain't finna say that to this nigga. Like it ain't even worth it. Or it's like, do I? I don't see this nigga enough. Do I really feel like arguing with this nigga today? Or you feel me? Like, yeah, you just. It's hard for a nigga with a politic and an ideology. It's hard enough for me to be saying something, nigga. Sometimes, so I know that regular motherfuckers who don't got who who are dependent on them, ain't can't do it. You know what I'm saying? And so it's yeah, it's that if these if we doing like the, if the average everyday person who is even dealing with issues of self worth and lack of knowledge has trouble following leadership. What do you think a nigga who is, from a societal standpoint, viewed as the cream of the crop? What you think is going to be? That's just practicing a high level of self-awareness to know, like, yeah, my ego has been highly developed. I know I ain't, I got yes people around me all the time. It's just, it's a lot of unlearning that needs to be done. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? I mean, you just described capitalism <laughs> as one, one hell of a system. You feel me? Like uh, that's that's all it is. Is a- again, you know, this isn't a, a problem to I- individualize. This is a system. You know what I'm saying? This is a system that does this. This is the system that creates this. In order to free ourselves from that system, we gotta have independence, sovereignty, and political control, and build towards that. And the only way you do that is through organizing. It's through organization that has a guiding ideology towards independence. Towards freedom, towards decolonization, and that is a new African independence movement. But um, I feel like we gotta do some Patreon extended shit, bro. We ain't done some I'm so Patreon hungry, bro. extended shit I'm, for a minute. My stomach is literally touching my back. All right, then we won't. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll listen to you talk for fifteen minutes. I ain't finna talk about myself for fifteen minutes. Look, if for Patreon extended, this is your special shit for the month. You are gonna get to see our community learning shit before everybody else. All right. For the folks that wasn't there, you're going to get to be able to see the community learning shit before everybody else. And again, I hope that y'all, for the folks who are like, damn, we didn't get no extended content this month or for this episode, you know what we're about to go do right now? We're about to go to Best Buy and get <laughs> mics so that we can set up the cameras in the community learning space so that we can upload it online and so that people can that aren't living in Oakland and, don't have, and aren't able to come to the actual event can get access to the political ed- education that we're about to provide tomorrow. And then and we're about then we to do to a tech this, run. Then we have to go to the space and do a tech run. And also, this morning we spent, you know, on meetings, getting together content to launch our new, to launch our new website, to drop our merch, um, grocery program shit. Like, bro, niggas have been organizing since, since we woke up seven o'clock this morning. So forgive me for not having an extra, you know, fifteen minutes for y'all extended uh, content today. I got to go do some real work. Hey, and this was real work though. Yeah, but some hey, more real work. It's twelve eighteen, and that's that's us signing out. <laughs> it's twelve eighteen. We do more, <laughs> do more in three hours. In. <laughs>